Hey everyone, welcome back to Acker News. Hope everybody had a good week and you're ready to just chill out and talk about some gaming news for a little while. I know I've said this before and the videos ended up like 30 minutes, but this week really wasn't a really fast week, a really big week for gaming news. It was it was kind of slow. There wasn't that much uh, to talk about, but there were still some 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 things of interest to me personally, at least, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about here today, and we're going to start out with our rapid-fire news segment, as per usual. So let's get right into that. Let's start off with something a little bit light here. We're going to be talking about Masahiro Sakurai and the tweet that he posted just, mm, at least from the time of recording this, 21 hours ago, where he says that he doesn't really have to worry about um, people speculating about Smash characters or possible uh, new characters in Smash. So he can just post on his Twitter whatever he wants, and he posted a picture of his cat with the uh, <laughs> with the Among Us imposter, uh, or at least that's what this looks to be. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. I never really thought about it too much, but I guess Sakurai, every time he posts a tweet, at least when he was still working on Smash, he would have to think like, well, I can't really post this because then people are going to be thinking this. And uh, as we all know, Smash uh, Smash fans like to sort of analyze every single detail of everything in every trailer or, uh, you know, Smash Direct or anything like that. Sakurai presents. There was that one thing with the, <laughs> what was it, like a, like a chair in the background that was like purple or something. And then people said, oh, it's going to be Waluigi in the, in the next, uh, the next uh, Smash character or whatever. <laughs> so now he just posts whatever he wants, I guess. So that's uh, that's good for good for good old Sakurai. Next, we have a bit of a weird situation that's been going on in the new MMO that was just released by Amazon just a little while back called The New World, where the currency is actually in a state of extreme scarcity, meaning that it has a very high value compared to the actual prices of certain commodities on the market. So people are opting towards bartering different, uh, you know, crafting materials or gathering materials, uh, crafted items, things like that, for other crafted items and stuff like that. Uh, it's become sort of a barter economy in the game for at least certain players because the actual value of currency is so high that people don't really want to give that away. Uh, even for things like, you know, repairing your armor or paying for taxes or stuff like that that uh, New, New World uh, happens to have, uh, the, the price is so high that <laughs> you can barely afford that, you know, let alone buy items if they were actually appropriately priced uh, on the auction house or whatever it's called in-game. Uh, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a weird situation going on over there. I don't know how Amazon's really going to fix this problem. They could potentially implement like, uh, I guess, uh, like a floor for the prices of the, of the, uh, of the items. Because as it is now, they're just kind of in a nosedive. They could also just take the direct approach and just kind of give players more gold or whatever. I think I believe it's called golden game, right? Uh, or they could add other ways for you to earn gold that's actually, uh, you know, more profitable than say like doing the questing or uh, whatever. Just uh, sort of up the up the drop rate essentially. So that's a potential fix. You kind of just have to flood the market with more currency so that you can, you know, lower its value. And then the prices of goods can come back up to a normal level. And then you can actually have a functioning economy as opposed to just people trading, you know, logs for ore or whatever it may happen to be. All right, next we have the announcement of the new name for Jesse McCree, the gunslinging cowboy in Overwatch. Uh, seeing as his previous namesake uh, was sort of ousted from the company under various allegations. They thought it right to change his name, which is obviously, you know, I agree with that. And they, the name they picked is now going to be Cole Cassidy. Uh, you know, eh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the name. I don't, I don't think it's a great name. It's kind of a, I, I know what they were going for. Like they were going for like that, you know, cool cowboy name, old you know, Cole Cassidy. But uh, for me, it just sounds kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know. I would have preferred something, you know, a little bit more, mm, something a little bit darker to kind of go along with his character. But, you know, it is what it is. They had a whole backstory for why this was, uh, you know, what it is, like, in terms of, like, the game lore. It's like every cowboy has, like, a, a past, and they run from the past, and now he has to face his past. He's now Cole Cassidy, but, you know, Jesse McCree was just an alias or something like that. But, uh, yeah, we all know the true story there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the name is what it is. I'm happy they did change it. Uh, but, 
you know, going forward, we'll have to see what the uh, reaction to this is. It seems, uh, you know, positive so far, but I guess uh, I guess we'll see. All right, I think this is a pretty good transition. You'll see why in a second, but <laughs> uh, we had the announcement this week of a new sort of statue, a new figure from Fat Lane Toys, as they're called, and it is a collaboration between One Piece, the manga anime series, and Mario, <laughs> and they took Mario and sort of made him look like Goldie Roger, Gold Roger, whatever you want to call him, from One Piece, and uh, <laughs> this is the result. <laughs> He looks a bit like McCree, so I figure that's a, that's a pretty good transition. Or, sorry, Cole Cassidy. <laughs> if you didn't know this about me, I am actually quite the big One Piece fan. I do uh, keep up on my One Piece. I, I mean, I used to read the manga quite a bit, and I kind of stopped watching that in favor of the anime with the current arc. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I enjoy my One Piece, I guess, is the, uh, the main thing there. And uh, because of that, I'm pretty interested in this statue... However, <laughs> there's no way I'm going to buy it because it's $440, <laughs> which is kind of, a, you know, kind of a bit of an astronomical price for something like this. Uh, I know figures can be expensive, but it's only about 10 inches tall, and, uh, you know, it's not really that big for something of this price. I don't know. It seems a bit pricey to me, so I probably won't be getting it, but I definitely do think it's pretty cool. You got Mario with his, uh, his mushroom shoulder pads there. On his back, he's got like a like a piranha plant. <laughs> it's it's a really cool statue, but uh, yeah, I probably won't be getting it myself just because it's so expensive. But uh, you know, hey, I, I do think it's really cool, and I wanted to share it with you guys here. And now, last but not least, we have the announcement of the GTA Grand Theft Auto Remastered trilogy that was just announced uh, you know, a few days back, and uh, you know the sort of fan reaction to that. Personally, I watched the trailers. I thought, you know, it looked pretty cool. They stayed true to the original graphical style, but just kind of like, you know, made it look a little bit more modern in terms of like, you know, not being so blocky and that sort of thing, the lighting effects. Uh, they just generally just up the game. Uh, but, you know, certain people online weren't too happy with it. Uh, they kind of <laughs> said that it, it doesn't really look like a game that would be worth $60 because of the art style, but, you know, personal opinion of mine is that you know just because an art style is you know a little bit cartoony doesn't mean that it's not worth sixty dollars or that that's uh, you know any worse than some other game that may have like a really realistic art style I don't really see that being a really good comparison to make there but you know obviously everyone's entitled to their opinion of you know what's worth what you know something may be worth sixty dollars to one person but not to another person you know it's just personal opinion but uh, for me personally I think that the the level of the remaster that they've done here is certainly worth $60. It seems like they've put in enough work to sort of warrant that. Obviously, I haven't gotten my hands on the game, so I can't say for sure, but it seems to be that way, at least from the graphical perspective. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll have to see when the game comes out. Uh, I'm not sure when that is. I believe it releases November 11th, which is not that far away, just a couple of weeks from now. So I guess the game is in kind of a finished state, as long as the, uh, the date that I'm seeing here on Google is correct. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to have to wait and see for uh, how, the, how the reviews go and how people sort of see the game once it's actually released. But now let's move on to some of the bigger news from this week, at least the stuff that I'd like to talk just a bit more about. Uh, and the first thing I'd like to talk about are these Nintendo Switch Two or Nintendo Switch Pro rumors that have been going around pretty, pretty recently, just over the last couple of days. And according to these rumors, at least the ones that I saw, the new Switch Two is going to be released sometime between holiday 2022 and early 2023. And that's not the biggest sort of point of contention here. That is that according to these rumors, the new Switch is not going to be backwards compatible with previous original Switch titles. So. Here's the thing. Obviously, these are just rumors. You can't really put too much stock into them. Even if they, you know, do have some sort of truth to them, they may not be completely true. Some source may not have, you know, all of the details. They might just be, you know, going off of one person telling them one thing, but that's not actually the case, or it's just like a certain way through development. You never know. So, personally, I don't really think that the next Switch is going to not be backwards compatible with the pre the uh, original Switch, because I'm pretty sure Nintendo knows that if they put out a new Switch that's not backwards compatible, 
with the original Switch, there would just be so much backlash. There would be an insane amount of backlash. <laughs> There's already people, you know, sort of saying, oh, this is terrible, this is a horrible idea. Uh, you know, on YouTube and on other, you know, Twitter, social media sites, things like that. So, obviously Nintendo knows this. We've been on them in the past for, you know, backwards compatibility, uh, you know, game preservation, all of this. You know, their Nintendo Switch Online service is not good enough. They need more games on there. They need to increase the frequency of the games. Uh, you know, they're not doing enough to actually make games on previous consoles playable on newer consoles. Like, I mean, if you have a Switch, how are you... Like, you can't really play too many of the Wii U games. I mean, they ported a lot of them over, but they just made them $60 again, which is just, like, you know, <laughs> not really a great way to go about doing things. And uh, honestly, I think that if they made their next console, you know, just a standalone console, no backwards compatibility with the Switch, even though they've been promoting all of this, you know, this Nintendo Switch family of systems or whatever it is, I really do think that there would just be a really big fallout due, uh, you know, because of that. <laughs> it just wouldn't be pretty. Now, as for the release date being early 2023 or holiday 2022, you know, I honestly don't see it being holiday 2022. I just can't see that. I feel like they want to have at least one more holiday season for the OLED to, you know, sort of move as many possible units as they can, uh, you know, of that console. Um, yeah, I, I just, that's just too early. Also, you had those reports from Nintendo that said, oh, we're not currently working on, uh, you know, a new Switch model besides for the Switch OLED. And obviously, if these rumors are true, then that would have been, you know, a lie, which is, you know, to be expected because <laughs> they're not going to say, oh, we're making a new Switch console, so, you know, go out and buy the Switch OLED, we're making a new one, but, you know, buy the OLED anyway, they're not going to say that. So, you know, if that is the case, then kind of a little bit, a little bit of grime there, but it's, uh, it's nothing new for companies like Nintendo. So, you know, it is what it is. So if I had to, you know, venture a guess, I'd say that in my opinion, I think that the new Switch 2 or whatever is going to be released in, you know, around March, you know, about the same timing of the original Switch, like March of 2023 with backwards compatibility for the original Switch, but, you know, obviously I'm no insider, I don't know, you know, what I'm talking about, that's just a complete guess, but that's just how I feel personally. And now to sort of break things up between our big news this week, uh, let's talk about this week's deal of the week, and that is going to be on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Expansion Pass, the bundle for the Switch, the digital version, which is currently $47.19 at Walmart specifically, and uh, I think that's a pretty good deal, all things considered. Obviously, Breath of the Wild doesn't really come down that far in terms of price. I think the lowest I've ever seen is like $35, $40 for uh, Breath of the Wild. So with the expansion pass and the original game, I think that's a you're getting a pretty good deal there, at least in, in Nintendo terms. So I'd say if you haven't played Breath of the Wild or the expansion pass, well, I guess not really just the expansion pass, but if you haven't played Breath of the Wild, I think this is a, a pretty good way to get in. This is a pretty good deal, so I'd recommend that, and that's this week's deal of the week. Okay, and now for our last piece of big news for this week. Yes, this is a pretty short one, at least in comparison to previous Acker News volumes, editions, whatever you want to call them, episodes. I think that's a good, uh, that's a good word for it. Um, but uh, yeah, so this week's last piece of big news is that Advanced Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp, the remakes of the original Advanced Wars 1 and 2, uh, has been delayed to spring of 2022. And this was posted on Nintendo's official Twitter account, where they said that the game just needs a little more time for fine-tuning. You'll be battling with Andy and friends soon. Thanks for your patience. So, obviously, the fact that the game got delayed is a bit of a bummer, but... Personally, I'm of the opinion that game delays are inevitable in the gaming industry just based on the nature of how games are made, and I would much rather play a game that is in its optimal state in the sort of state that the developers envisioned for it than play a game a little bit earlier, but it's a terrible experience. I, I, I don't know. I'm just always the type of person that's fine with waiting for a good product. I don't need a bad product now. Obviously. People that get mad at delays, they want the game now as it should be, as, you know, the optimal state they want it now. But sometimes that's just not going to happen, so you got to be a little bit patient here. 
It's just something that's going to happen in the gaming industry, and I think uh, as a whole we've gotten a little bit more uh, used to it as times have changed, but, you know, obviously it's it's a bit of a bummer, but I'm, I'm willing to wait for a, a good game is, I guess, the moral of the story there. And based on the reaction on Twitter, obviously there's some people that aren't too happy about it, but, you know, it has 14,000 likes on this, you know, official Nintendo tweet, and only you know, 2,000 retweets and 1,500 quote retweets and a couple hundred comments. So it seems like most people are on board with this delay. Uh, most people are fine with waiting a little bit for this game in particular. And, you know, I think that's a good thing. Hopefully we'll see a similar reaction when other games inevitably get delayed down the line. But you never know with the gaming community these days. Um, but, you know, a guy can hope. <laughs> And I think with that, that pretty much wraps up this edition of Acker News. Thanks for sticking with me. This was only about, hmm, looks like we're going to be just over 16 minutes here for this specific episode. But, you know, there wasn't that much to talk about this week. <laughs> uh, but it was fun, nevertheless. I do always enjoy making these videos for you guys, and hopefully you guys enjoy watching them as well. If you did enjoy today's video, consider giving it a like. It's always greatly appreciated and helps me out a ton. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing as well. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Hack out. Cole Cassidy? Eh, you know, <laughs> I'm still not sold on the name. If it was me, I probably would have gone with something like Bart Mackleston. It just sounds more like a cowboy name. <laughs> it's not a real name, but, uh, you know, I think it sounds better than Cole Cassidy, at least. You're free to use it if you want, Blizzard. Take it. I don't care. <laughs> Bart Mackleston.